Today we're doing the parable of the talents. This is a story that Jesus told about using your gifts and letting abundance bring more abundance, letting plenty bring more plenty. Three things we want to remember about this kind of story. The first is that scale doesn't matter. So a girl this size, even though she'd be very, very, very hungry, probably couldn't eat a piece of fudge this big. She'd be terribly ill if she did, so she wouldn't do that. The next thing to remember is that um, you have to supply the faces, so we don't actually know what this little girl looks like. She looks like whatever you imagine her to look like. And finally, we begin by bringing the story to us with a song. Bible, Bible, tell your story, speak to us about God's glory. There's so much we need to know, tell us how God loves us so. So the story that Jesus tells us is about a man who owned a great deal of property. And he was about to begin a journey. We don't know where he went, but he went a long way away and he couldn't get back right away. So before he left, he called for his three servants, his slaves. He called them to him to give them specific instructions and also actually a gift. Now, his favorite servant got the biggest present he got from out of the man's very secret stash where he kept his special gold. He gave the one that he trusted the most. He gave five talents. Now, it's a talent. If a, if a talent were a rock, it would be a 75 pound rock. So bigger by quite a bit than your average hound dog. But if it were gold or silver, as these were, one talent is worth 20 years of work. This is a lot of money. This is a hundred years of hard work right here. And that went to the first servant. To his next favorite servant, he gave only two talents, a little bit less. And to his least favorite servant, he gave, perhaps the man was lazy, we don't know, but he gave him only one talent. Still 20 years of work, so think about how much this is. We don't know, I've read all sorts of things, it's somewhere between 1000 and probably $30,000, but it's a lot of money, even the one. Off the man went on his journey. He was gone for quite a while. His hound dog wagged him goodbye. Off he went to a different world, leaving these servants to do something with those talents that they had been given. We don't know what they did. Maybe they gave them to somebody who was good at making money, and so that person made more money for them. Maybe they invested in other people. Maybe there was a fisherman who needed his boat fixed, and so one of the, one of the servants invested in the boat in return for half of the fish that he caught the next year. That would be a good investment. Maybe they invested in grain for a farmer. Maybe they invested in seed for someone who's run out of money to buy seed with. And with a little bit of seed, not very much, but some time and some work, they yielded a tremendous amount of seed out of the ground. 
and sold that to increase their money. What we do know is what the third man did. And he took his talent. He was afraid to spend it. So he buried it in the earth and hid it so no one could find it. I think they might also have invested in a fudge shop because everyone likes fudge, but we don't know. These things we don't know, we're just guessing. What we do know is that after a while, the owner, the property owner, came back and asked his servants to come forward with the money he'd given them. Well, the, the servant who had been given five talents said, Master, I invested it wisely, and look, I have five talents more to give you. Oh, my goodness, well, the master was quite impressed. He made double his money on that one. The next favorite was brought forward. He said, Master, you gave me two talents, and I made out of the two, with good investment, I made two more. I doubled your money. The master was again quite pleased. The last one came forward. And the master said, and what did you do with your talent that I gave you only one? And the servant said, well, master, I know that you're sort of a harsh man. That means quick to anger and perhaps difficult to get along with. So I buried it in the ground so that when you came back, I would be sure to have that talent to give back to you. Hmm. The master wasn't pleased. He said, you ought to have invested my money. For those who have much, more will be given. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. Goodness, that's difficult. This is money talents. And sometimes in the telling of this story, we get confused with people talents. I think it's all right because I think as it's a parable, that is part of the side story as we learned last week, a parable. So let's think about what kind of talents a person could have. Well, if you were one of these guys, maybe you're good at turning car wheels. I don't know how you'd make money out of that, but there must be a way. Maybe you're good at tumbling, <laughs> which is almost the same thing, only forwards instead of sideways. Maybe you're good at making a sound like a frog. Whoa! A big frog. <laughs> or maybe your talent is making noisemakers that can send out a beat, get everybody all happy. That's a good talent to have. So many talents people could have. Maybe you're just smart. Maybe your talent is sitting and thinking and maybe writing down your great thoughts on a little tablet in these days would have been a tablet. So many talents you could have. I think if your talent is spitting on hound dogs as they go by, then maybe you want to examine your talent pool and think of more talents. But I think there's a takeaway. I think today's takeaway is when your master, when God, gives you gifts. Make the most of them you can. That's the job. All those gifts are something to be grateful for, and everyone has gifts and talents that are meant to make the world better and to make the kingdom of God happen here on earth. Amen. Bible, Bible, Tell your story, speak to us about God's glory. There's so much we need to know. Tell us 
how God loves us so.